We should sell now and buy in on Y data. The market doesn't understand the stock. The actual value is clouded by some drama going on with the CEO, but it has strong government contracts. Welcome to Investorama, and you've just heard the brilliance of Emily, an analyst at OneCrest Capital, about to be promoted portfolio manager. Revenue is up 45% year over year and trades at a low multiple to my forward sales projections. My name is George. I'm a reform banker, ex-financial marketer, and currently an explorer in the world of alternative investing. And I'm going to conduct a due diligence on the movie Fair Play that's been recently released on Netflix. It's a rare treat to have a movie about hedge funds. This new movie is very much about female empowerment as we see Emily in this male-dominated hedge fund world. At the core of the movie, there's the relationship between Emily and Luke. The tagline for the movie is that an unexpected promotion at a cutthroat hedge fund pushes a newly engaged couple's relationship to the brink. But on this podcast, we're just going to look at the financials. What we want to decide at the end is whether or not we invest our billions with Emily. Let's go. As we start, we see a fairly small setup. Um, there are two categories of people, analysts or research analysts and portfolio managers. There's a physical separation as the analysts share an open space and the portfolio managers have their little glass door desk. This is fairly realistic, although in the real world, maybe there's different grades of analysts. You can be a senior analyst and also you don't necessarily end up as a portfolio manager. You might be head of a sector research, for example. Now let's try to understand what the company does. And we're going to jump straight to a client pitch. Into strong risk adjusted returns for our clients. As we talk about risk adjusted return, we know that we are in the hedge fund world where it's not just about maximizing return, but delivering the maximum return per Five unit of risk. 10 year track record is in the top 1%. They're in the top tier and there's a running joke among this LP of the hedge funds that all the firms are in the top tier because it really depends on what ranking you do. And typically those that outperform for a long time become big funds, whereas this one has remained fairly small. We use various strategies, which... Now, looking at the strategy, it's a fund that's focused on equity. Uh, it looks like their main strategy is equity long short with a long bias, which is quite typical. It's important to look at what they offer. Developed a diversified oh, set of in. alpha signals designed to... $1,000 machine. Alpha, like everyone else, and how they offer it. Focus on fundamental, technical, and macro approaches to... I don't think any hedge funds anymore say they're very good at technical analysis and that's their differentiating factor. Macro and fundamentals, they go together in terms of equity. What's really missing here is the quantitative approach. Clearly, it's an old school hedge fund where analysts go into their spreadsheets and look at one company at a time, but there's no big data approach. And I think most hedge funds have this now. That probably would make it very hard for this hedge fund to survive in 2023. Who the fuck are you to judge me? Now we understand who works there and what does the fund do. Let's break down the financial scenes. The first one is the one we heard as the teaser. And we hear the different components of Emily's analysis. That's very convincing. The market doesn't understand the stock. The actual value is clouded by some drama going on with the CEO, but it has strong government contracts. It goes through the narrative, what the market understands. Revenue is up 45% year over year. And the fundamentals the growth, and the value of the company. Trades at a low multiple to my forward sales projections. And what does the boss say? Do it. What's really missing is when they say do it is how much and how. There's no sizing, there's no risk control. But let's move on to the next one. I haven't gone through a complete analysis yet, but my gut feeling is to move to a long position before others catch wind. And we see the approach is very different. She talks about gut feeling, She's not fully informed. The analysis hasn't been finalized. And what if I told you they were about to get sued? And eventually what we realize is the boyfriend is just pushing for it, but there's no argument. Finish the analysis. We should go long. Finish the analysis. I'm telling you, we should go long. And oh, everybody's doing it. So it's really 
a bad pitch, a bad rationale. Every firm was jumping on it. Millennium, BlackRock, Avenue, yeah, every well, single person. We're not fucking sheep, Luke. But it doesn't need to be such a bad result. Again, what's missing is the sizing, the risk management, the impact on the portfolio overall. If she wasn't sure about it, but still wanted to take a punt, she could have taken a small position or tight stop loss. Luckily, Emily bounces back. That's our third breakdown. But here, it's the script that perhaps has continuity issues. We see her calling the boss at midnight. She's convinced about this talk and going to take a position. Look, I'm confident in this one. Yeah. Let's see if it pays off. And then what we see is she goes to sleep, wakes up, listens to the news, and there's news about the companies. Luke. And they're good news. And my feeling was that what she predicted happens, but she didn't have the time to, put, to place her order. And that's a tragedy. But no, she's quite happy with it. In fact, she's winning. So we just assume that she placed the order before the market. Anyway, there's something that doesn't make sense in the timing, but Emily wins and that's what matters. So before deciding to invest, there's two more topics that I want to explore here. The first is Luke's being useless and privileged. We had some point that she's been pushed by a friend to the owner of the hedge fund. Do you know how much Luke's last unicorn cost us? 15 million. And what we also see is that although he's destroyed his career by doing something really stupid, he bounced back already. He cannot lose because he has contact. Um. I'm going to SF to meet with my brother's boss. He's interested in giving me some seed money to start my own company. I think that's a topic that is not explored in the movie, but also from our due diligence perspective, there's two things. One, the recruitment at the firm is definitely faulty. We don't want people who are there just because they're friends with the owner. And secondly, perhaps Emily's judgment, not as a boyfriend, girlfriend, but as a portfolio manager, as a manager of people, Clearly, she's a bad judge of character and skills. Luke is useless. The second thing, and that's a big one, is the culture at the hedge fund. It's a place where you're not allowed to date, which is weird. The boss can call you at 2 a.m. There's a drinking culture, which is unhealthy. And the big boss is an again? asshole that can insult you. Dumb fucking bitch. I think that's really wrong. And what's very disappointing is that Emily, who's so clever, perhaps she could change that or she would rebel against it. Making up these stories, telling people that we were in love, that we had this whole life together. But instead together. of that, she fully embraces it. She lies to stay at the firm. I wanted to report him, but... And we can only imagine that she continues her career there. I was afraid there. of how unstable he was. For all those reasons, we cannot invest with one crest capital. However, I think that if Emily was to move to another hedge fund or set up a firm and use her brains to deliver great performance for investors at a company where the culture and the setup is better, then we could definitely allocate some money towards her. Check out Fair Play on Netflix. I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to do more with guests. In the meantime, let me know what did you think of Fair Play and also what else should we analyze? Thank you for watching and listening and see you again soon.